morning what's going on there folks good afternoon to a few out there as well it is the earth master back here on this thursday august 3rd 2023 it's 11 40 a.m here california time latest activity looks like a 4.5 here across the indonesia islands area and uh, also a little small microquake here across the uh, turkey region it looks like looking at the last 24 hours here of earthquake activity across the states here, United States, uh, starting off here on the West Coast. As far as uh, latest activity goes and the largest movement, uh, there's that 3.1 down off the coast of San Diego early this morning, about 1230 or so local time. Uh, that earthquake occurring just off of the San Diego trough fault zone. A couple different thrust faults that sit out here uh, as we uh, look at the, um, the faults here on the map. A lot of strain. Uh, amongst the Pacific plate which sits over here and of course on the other side of this red line is the North American plate very sensitive area in terms of buildup and plate stress of course all this pushes right up against the plate boundary which is the San Andreas fault the southern end uh, of course is locked and loaded so to speak in terms of uh, well quite a bit of strain here it's been a little while since we've seen any larger scale movement on the San Andreas Fault. Over the past couple days, we did see a little slight increase in earthquake activity here off the Brawley Seismic Zone, along with a 4.0 that came in um, just a day or so ago, a couple days ago, that 4.1 uh, sitting right off the Brawley Seismic Zone, which is uh, basically an extension of fault here of the plate boundary, the San Andreas Fault. So continue to watch that uh, down there in Southern California. Uh, the rest of the state, a little small movement here across the Long Valley Supervolcano Bay Area there in Northern California. One earthquake near Pacifica earlier this morning. It looks like a 1.3. Nothing big going on here. And a little bit of activity scattered up here across Lake Almanor from last night. This has been kind of an ongoing swarm here. Last 30 days of activity. And uh, if we were to go back a month prior to that, uh, we would see this map pretty cluttered with earthquake activity. Uh, there's a fault system that sits right underneath this lake. Somewhat of a newly discovered one that's been showing uh, some seismic activity here recently in the past couple months. Uh, roughly about 23 earthquakes or so in the 2 range. I think we even had a 3 in here too. Uh, yeah, 3.5 uh, from earlier back in July. So just a little bit of increasing activity there, specifically on that new fault. At least new to us. Uh, it's an older fault, right? But uh, new to Discovery there across the Lake Albanor area. One earthquake here across the Cascadia, 2.8. That's at the southern end of the Cascadia mega thrust, 24 kilometers deep. Pacific Northwest, relatively uh, small earthquake activity across Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens over the last 24 hours, although that activity from yesterday. Uh, let's see, Yellowstone National, a little bit of activity up here in Montana. Yellowstone National Park down here in Wyoming. Uh, doesn't look like we're seeing too much activity there today. Let me pull up the latest map here. And uh, local activity, as far as local earthquake activity, there's a handful of smaller quakes. These are all probably generally below the 0.1 threshold, probably 1.0 or below, uh, but in the very small range there of the one magnitude level. Aside from that, not a whole lot going on here as uh, far as earthquake activity goes across the park for now. Super Volcano continues to sleep. Uh, rest of the country here, some spotty activity outside of Midland and well west of Odessa, out, out uh, west of Pecos, Texas, out there in the oil fields. Uh, a little bit of movement across Oklahoma and Arkansas today. One earthquake down here in South Carolina, a little 1.9. All right, anything going on here across the Caribbean plate? Well, we did have this earthquake off the Caribbean plate here on the Cocos and the Nazca plate boundary of 5.9. Off the coast of Panama yesterday. Uh, let's see if we got any further movement down here. It's always an active area. A lot of these are some uh, red color rings indicating some older movement. I do see a couple newer rings there into the uh, Gulf of Fonseca area, it looks like. A couple smaller quakes there in that region. That's been a, an area of interest here far as earthquake swarming goes. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the world map here from the EMSC model real quick and see what we have being reported. Um, 
These guys are a little slow with their whole new system, so we'll have to come back here and check on that. But it uh, looks like we did see some further activity uh, a little bit further up the coast here, off the coast of uh, Guatemala, 4.2 coming in late last night, following this activity down here. Puerto Rico area, uh, roughly about the same as yesterday. A couple newer twos on the map there, but literally no, uh, no large earthquake activity to report for now. And uh, down here in the Gulf of Fonseca area, uh, looks like uh, only one earthquake here in the last 24 hours, a 3.3. Looks like that swarming has um, definitely tapered off down there in, the, in that uh, gulf. But we'll continue to watch that uh, for some movement. South America region, one earthquake here after midnight, a 4.5, 12 kilometers deep. But as we can see, there's quite a few more smaller quakes here across the area of the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, the Alaska region looks pretty, uh, looks a little quiet up there. Not for sure what's going on. Uh, let's go ahead and check out this other map. Now remember some of this activity here is going to be below the 2.5 threshold. I believe I, ha I have this set uh, for, uh, what do I have it set at? I think like 2.4 and above. So that's kind of why we're not seeing uh, a whole bunch of these small microquakes out there. I just don't want to clutter the globe with a bunch of microquakes. There is some, obviously some uh, microquakes up there, but that's very typical across the plate boundary there of Alaska. Kuro Kamachaka Trench, watching some deeper movement quakes last night, or yesterday I should say, uh, almost 400 kilometers deep there into the Kuro Kamchaka for a 4.3. Today's activity, uh, doesn't look like there's too much activity there stirring up. I do need to bring this back for whatever reason. The Earthquake 3D globe likes to adjust itself uh, in terms of the um, number of quakes on the globe. 4.5 here, pretty deep earthquake striking, whoa, 640 kilometers deep. If that is the case, we're going to watch for some further uh, movement here across this area. That's a super deep earthquake for this region. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, USGS reporting that there as well. Um... Indonesia Islands area, watch out with this deeper movement quake activity here. That could trigger a bunch of movement at the surface levels. Definitely continue to watch that. Uh, Java Trench area did see a 5.0 off the Andaman Sea area. This earthquake coming in early this morning. Uh, USGS looks like they downgraded it to a 4.9. Pretty shallow earthquake, but uh, definitely keep an eye regionally on this area. Uh, with this deeper movement quake activity there in the Indonesia area. Uh, let's see here. South America, or uh, Africa region, excuse me. Uh, one earthquake well off the coast here of South Africa, a little 3.2. Uh, some further movement up here in the divergent boundaries. Notice a lot of activity across the Red Sea area lately. And also um, out here in the Tanzania area, that is uh, a couple different areas out here uh, a couple divergent boundaries as well 4.5 striking out there it's been awfully uh active out here across the red sea here recently bringing up the last week or so of activity seen a swarm off the red sea area uh into this region here did see a 5.6 uh earlier just a couple days ago uh, in this area. And even prior to that, I think we had some further activity back in July. Uh, I guess we can add one more quake there. So uh, things stirring up here off of the, the divergent boundary zones. Turkey area did see some movement as well late last night with a 4.2. Of course, some smaller quake activity occurring within this region. And... Um, Low activity across the Azores as well. One earthquake way up north. That is going to be, let's see, that's a 3.2 earthquake. Zoom over here and see what that is. Way up in Sweden. 3.2, yeah, I'm coming in just a short time ago. 11 kilometers deep. Uh, let's see, South or the uh, South Sandwich Islands, pretty quiet down here. No telling how many earthquakes are striking into the uh, Antarctica area. I don't think there's a lot of equipment down there to monitor all the activity like we do here across the, um, you know, the civilized areas here of the world. 
4.6 showing up here in our, in our quiet zone. The Mariana Trench has been awfully quiet recently. Looks like that's starting to uh, pop up here a little bit. That earthquake coming in about 8 o'clock this morning, my time here, 4.6. Northern Mariana Islands area, pretty shallow, 10 kilometers deep. Uh, Hawaii, not a whole lot going on. One lonesome earthquake out there, at least above that threshold. For the most part, though, things are very quiet here across the uh, big island for now. Only a handful of smaller quakes out there. Nothing major going on there across the uh, volcanoes for now. Uh, let's see here. New Zealand, do we have anything going on here across New Zealand on the map? Some older activity from last night. There we Seen that 4.0 South Island. Looks like the North Island area seen a couple threes overnight. So let's double check that real quick. Let me go over here to the GeoNet servers. 3.0, three hours ago. That's just uh, south or northwest of the uh, Coverdon area, it looks like. 2.8 from yesterday. Uh, we do need to bring up all magnitudes here and see what we have. 3.7. This is going to be way up along the Kermadec Trench with that dot. And uh, 55 minutes ago, deleted 2.5, 3.7 just off the North Island coast. Some of these are unfelt or not felt or unnoticeable earthquakes, as they mentioned here. Um, let me bring up, I want to see if we can find those threes that are supposedly occurring around the North Island area. There's a little bit of the uh, seismic signatures there, it looks like, from a, from a three. A little bit of a swarm going on here across this area, south side of North Island, just outside of Wellington, it looks like. There's that four-pointer from last night showing up pretty nicely. Handful of smaller quakes here previously, um, prior to that 4.0 around Jackson Bay, some smaller earthquake activity. Uh, although it looks like for the most part, though, things calmed down since then, but of course continue to watch that it does sit on a major plate boundary here all right uh what else anything else we're uh, missing out here across the the globe aside from the typical movement in the uh in the typical areas all right let's check out space weather see if we got a better view of our sunspot region that's coming around the bin on the southeastern limb of the sun look at that new area also another new one here, uh, a couple different regions that are making its making their presence known here across the visible disk. Saying goodbye here to 3380, that's been a source of numerous M flares. And uh, we have noticed, it looks like a couple different areas of growth overnight amongst uh, at least one sunspot here. This one's starting to gain a little bit more complexity. And... Um, I would say that's about it as far as these uh, weak sunspots go. Keep an eye on this area. Of course, this one down here can still produce uh, an M flare, but it is almost out of view. It should be gone by later tonight. And we're left with uh, quite a few newer sunspots that we need to watch for and uh, monitor here in the coming days. Uh, right now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 55, X flare around 10% chance, proton event around 10% chance or so. And um, no major. Storms in the forecast, as far as solar weather storms, it looks like maybe a G1 class storm forecasted around the 4th and the 5th time frame. We'll see how that plays out, though, right? It uh, looks like the timestamp here is going to be midday tomorrow, though. Current aurora forecast, very minimal, not a whole lot going on there. The uh, Storm Prediction Center has a moderate uh, or enhanced risk, excuse me, of severe weather across portions mainly around Kansas. Uh, although that tornado potential there scoots way away from that zone down into the uh, Alabama area there in the shaded green. Most of the threat today across Kansas going to be some uh, wind events there, 65 knots or greater, potentially with these thunderstorms that would be popping up uh, throughout the afternoon, early evening time period. Inflow, outflow, a lot of those winds uh, can create some uh, damage out there. Straight line winds. And that's what the main threat looks like today there across the area of Kansas. Little hell threat in there in eastern Colorado as well with 15% chance of seeing uh, uh, at least one inch diameter hell or larger within about 25 miles of a point. 
All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have yourself a good day. Stay safe out there. And uh, uh, the, we're kind of in a, a peak of a cooling period right now here in California. It's only supposed to be about 88 today. And then things going to ramp up to 105, 110 uh, come this weekend here for California. So I'm going to get outside and enjoy the cooler, if you can call it cooler, cooler weather here in uh, my neck of the woods. Hope everyone enjoys their day and stay safe out there no matter where you're at. Getting very close to 100,000 subscribers, folks, and we appreciate every single one for uh, every single one of you guys for making that possible. And of course, we've got big time drawing coming up after we reach that 100K level. We'll be going more into that as we get closer. Have a good day. Catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Take care.